Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We are going to be taking a look at the Abrams Collected book featuring all of the Jim Lee X-Men trading cards. Uh, but first, I want to call everybody's attention to what we are calling, it's a new project, Jimmy, called Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July. The idea is that uh, we are taking and we are imploring other creators to take uh, some of your comp copies that you have laying around and uh, go stuff those things in the free little uh, libraries, uh, free little lending libraries that are in your local neighborhood, uh, on the street corners, uh, within your town and neighboring. Uh, we got to create new comic book readers. You and I were able to discover comics uh, at the little grocery store. Uh, they were cheap at that point. Uh, they were ubiquitous. That is no longer the case. Uh, so we have to, rather than complain about new comic book readership, we have to uh, have some kind of action items, man, to try to gain that readership. And I'm doing the same with doubles. You know, I'm put, putting together a little pile of doubles that I'm going to be uh, sliding into those lending libraries as well. So everybody can participate in this, and we all have to do what we can to increase comic book readership. Uh, I want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so that we can notify you when new v videos are available. That mitigates that kayfabe effect so that you get your hands on comics uh, before they go up in price after we do the videos. And if you watch these videos to the very end, that helps push our YouTube content out to other comic book loving YouTube viewers. Helps us grow our subscriber base and uh, we are only 1% of the way to the final subscriber tally that we want to hit before we can uh, call ourselves a success. So here we are, man. We got the Abrams book uh, collecting all the Jim Lee X-Men trading cards, and you know your boy Eddie P was called upon to do the uh, forward for that. That's for another video. I was thinking that it would be real fun to, uh, at some point, to like read the introduction and then read my first draft of my, my forward and see how things uh, sort of differ along the way. The entire package, like Abrams, uh, Abrams knows what the hell they're doing. Abrams Comic Arts. They're fantastic designers. They put together a good package. The the um, slip, the dust jacket, feels close to the wax packs. Like, I remember back in the day, like, they did a couple of books, like a, the Garbage Pals book, that definitely had that wax pack feel to it. Some really interesting choices, too. I guess they're scanning this art from the uh, from the trading cards, yeah, and it's really neat to see. Like I, I kind of fallen in love with this book, and I've barely had five minutes with it, <laughs> but it really captures those cards. Like it's um, it's not an artist edition, but it's like a facsimile reproduction of the cards in yeah. a way that I commend their choices. Yeah, it's real interesting. Shouts to Eric, the editor who who put it together. He and I were even going back and forth. He's like, man, some of these guys here, they want to have the back of the card showing. I'll, in the spread, they want the back and the front to show. I'm like, nah, you got to have it on the back. Like, that's that's the way the cards yes, work. You absolutely. know what I'm saying? But that was like a conversation. Of course, Eric was pushing for that, and he got it. But it's it's a beautifully designed book uh, shot from the actual materials. So you have a little off-register Magneto right here, just like the boxes, like the, the, the color steps on these things. This was This is practically done stuff. So you might get a little bit of a, uh, it, it looks like it was probably colored black line. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out too. And I think there are pages that show some of the coloring yeah. that Paul Mounts does. So you'll get to see exactly what that is, but it feels like he's mixing medias to get some of these color effects. So I don't know if it's airbrush, if it's dyes, who knows, but uh, we'll find out in this book. Shouts to Liam Flanagan for doing the design work on this thing. Good forward matter, you know, my forward, once again, we'll, we'll read that out loud uh, one time, and then we'll read my, my first draft and see what got snipped. That'll be another video. But amongst that, this early material, you get to see some of the uh, the artwork kind of shot from the, from the original. And Jim Lee is sort of required to maintain his monthly gig on the comics uh, while doing these cards, 100 different drawings that he has to do in his free time, after drawing the, the damn comic. Uh, Marvel hooked up with this company called Impel. They started doing those Marvel Universe cards. And the difference with that relationship compared to some of their earlier uh, dealings in the card market was that those cards, they were shot from uh, 
existing print materials. I speculate whenever I look at, at these cards and, and keep this in mind as you're going through them at home, I kind of wonder if he's doing like a Sharpie marker and then like a fine marker. Yeah. And there's even the Sharpie that has like the double, right. the double ends. Um, like a because, straight up Sharpie. Yeah. Like, it, like not a Micron. It looks like a Sharpie mark, that big heavy mark. Uh, definitely feels like he's using two markers. Let me say that one heavy and one light. So check this out, man. The, the year before, these are this is Jim Lee trading card sets, where they're taking from like that's not even that's like Will's Portacios on that shit, but they're taking printed comic pages and stuff and just turning it into a card, kind of dashed out, kind of banged out, kind of whack. A lot of card companies did this in the early '90s. Every card company, like every sort of Marvel card that was done, and almost all non-sports cards, the DC stuff. It would be taken for pre existing printed matter. Yes. When they hooked up with Impel, the, the idea was let's let's do some original material. Like let's let's design for the card. The Marvel Universe stuff goes hog wild, and uh, the idea started. We're going to make one card set a year. But after X Men One, uh, the where there was a card market and there was a comic book market in terms of speculation. Impel and Marvel decided let's do three sets a year, and X Men was one of them. You gotta you gotta ask the the hottest chick at the party out first, man. So Jim Lee, will you draw these things? Brilliant, brilliant move on Marvel's part. Brilliant move on Jim Lee to say yes because I really think this was a piece that that made him. Obviously, he's huge and a fan favorite to begin with, but these cards. I, you can't understate how important these cards were at this time period, and I think it just catapulted Jim Lee to an, another level. I, I agree with you, man, because uh, the comics, you you at least have to go to the magazine section to find the spinner racks. Those X-Men cards were at the cash wrap of every grocery store right there when you're checking out with mom. You see a cool Wolverine on the cover of this stuff. Yo, mom, could I get these? They were at every candy store right at the cash register. Uh, it's a different audience. And they're seeing that name time after time after time. He signed every one of these. Jim yeah. Lee, Jim Lee, Jim Lee. Again, very smart. And it's and it's and it's Jim Lee himself. He's inking these things, which is another uh reason to check this stuff out. Cool spread. Yes. And uh, talking with Eric, I was like, Eric, you're go you're gonna do Marvel Universe cards, right? You're gonna do Marvel Universe series too. Like that's that's the one to do. He's like, you know, start off with Jim Lee. And you would see these cards, like, once they start doing dedicated cards and having different artists drawing for the card rather than reproducing, made a huge difference. And didn't you chase certain artists? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you pull those Art Adam cards out and stuff? Like He drew, he drew one of the greatest Ghost Riders I've ever seen. Jusco did a bunch of those things, too. That was, uh, I think, a complete series, maybe, uh, from his art. Another yeah. great one. That would be a, another pretty set to reproduce. Yeah, so they talk about... Um hooking up with Jim Lee and you know you got to do 100 cards 100 drawings there's a deadline for that man but you got to maintain your your regular deadline too so there's all this inter editorial back and forth where I guess Bob Budiansky has to talk with Bob Harris because there was just inside the the kingdom of Marvel like editors wouldn't wouldn't poach talent so there was that sort of thing that had to be done uh, Bob Harris agreed that that was a smart move, but he was nervous about Jim missing some deadlines and things. It all seemed to work out, man. Man, I love the, the when we get to see the original art pieces like this. Yeah, and you could see that on an 11 by 17, you know, 10 by 15 image area, uh, this might be the center. So it gives you some sense of how big the image is. One thing that you would want to outsource, I would imagine, if you're Jim Lee, is you get fucking Art T-Bear or somebody to do all this gritting off so that all you have to worry about is the drawing part. Yeah, talk about like before the computer became a, a standard tool, right? Because nowadays you would make a template and then you would blue line print those things and you'd be set to go. And you can see if you look close, like you can see the pencil lines and stuff. Somebody blue lined those out. And also not just one piece of art, but also the close up, uh, the face shot for the back of it. Yes, some of the Paul Mounts coloring. And, and he says that like the, the amount of material, he used everything to, to color these cards. That makes sense. Airbrush, gouache, Doc Martin dyes, down to color pencil and marker. He would use it all. And you could see it in there. So this is an example of the color seps and things. Tell me, like, every single one of these images burn inside my mind. Yeah, I did not collect cards to any extent, and this would be the exception. Sure. And once those goddamn 8 million copies of X-Men 1 sell, it's time to merchandise. 
and you got your toys and you have your animated cartoon, it's a very compelling argument that uh, you might make something that'll penetrate the uh, the wider culture. Yeah, having those cards packaged too with the toys and with the various oh, license right, yeah. things, like, again, just what a great move. Like, you get approached with a lot of projects. You never know what's worth your time. This would be a big time sink. But the return, like, this was really the right one to say yes to. When you're a noob or if you're a civilian and you see this image, that's one thing. But you and I know that this must be a kayfabe fucking photograph because <laughs> there's not one tool here that Jim Lee has ever <laughs> used in any comic drawing that he's ever done. That's hilarious. All kinds of, like, cell vinyl paints, you know, like animator paints or something. Something. Makes for a great picture. Yeah. A great, great b- backdrop. He's like, yeah, I'll sit in uh, the digital chameleon seat, because that ain't his. A lot of filibustering with this uh, Bob Budiansky. He's giving you the whole goddamn rundown on the creation of X-Men and all that. Yeah, I, I look forward to reading it. I'm hoping that we'll get into some of the materials that Jim Lee was drawing with in those. Yeah, that might be good luck on that one. Yeah, probably mm-hmm. true. All right, man, jumping into the cards, dude. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings 1 through 4 is in stores now while supplies last. Every Red Room comic is self-contained story, so whatever issue your comic shop has is a great place to start. There's also Red Room, the Antisocial Network, collecting the first season of Red Room, available now wherever comics are bought and sold, except for 28 countries where it is banned and about 10 comic shops where it's banned, but you can still request it, they can still get it for you, and you can pick up Hulk Grand Design by me, two double-sized issues retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk in one coherent story, featuring my art, writing, color, letters, uh, the Grand Design treatment, so to speak. So pick these comics up wherever you buy comics and support Cartoonist Kayfabe. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Heading to San Diego Comic-Con? Get ready to see Scott Snyder himself by brushing up on your favorite Snyder comics with Comixology Unlimited. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, graphic novels, and manga titles, featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world, including exclusive titles from Scott Snyder. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial. For details, visit comixology.com unlimited. Like I said, almost every single one of these images is iconic to me. I think this, this Wolverine is an example of like hitting it with the hard line, you know, the bold line, and then switching the pen and then going smooth on, on that side. Because he is not using dip pens. He's not using brush. Even uh, on some of that original art where there's big black areas, you see the strokes of a marker. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of drawing in that Wolverine, though. Like, I don't know if these were drawn in a particular order or if some characters maybe had a little more weight behind them. You know, Wolverine, obviously, one of the the biggest characters in this card set, so maybe you put a little extra juice on it. Oh, dude, going into business for himself a little bit, a little little home age. Oh, how about that? Shades of things to come. Another thing about Jim Lee with drawing these characters, to me, he creates the iconic version of... Of certain characters. He makes certain characters cool. Like Forge never looked cooler than when Jim Lee did it. And his Banshee is right up there with uh, Art Adams, man. They're they're neck and neck with who draws the, the, the cooler looking Banshee. That Phoenix background's really impressive to me. Yeah. Yeah, he goes for it on some of the stuff. This Nightcrawler has so many shades of like Art Adams. Yes. Yeah, you definitely see some a lot of Art Adams' influence on, on many of these. Yeah, the background color on that Nightcrawler, too. Like, Paul Mounts is definitely playing around with a lot of stuff to get that texture. Yeah, some splatter effect there, probably masking some stuff off. What I thought is really cool about these is you've got 100 figures to draw. Yeah. Think of it as, like, uh, if this had been, like, a Kubert School exercise where you're supposed to do 100 drawings of a, of a Marvel Universe, DC something. Because, like, after about three poses... It's time to start digging. You know what I mean? And and Jim Lee does a good job of that in this set. I've seen the drawing for this Wolf's Bane, and you can really notice the um, thin line, like, you know, the same line weight marker uh, on everything. Yeah, if you look close, I'm convinced there's, like, two major drawing tools. Right. You know, you can see that heavy line in uh, in Sir- Siren's, like, the cape, the stripes in the uh, 
in that cape. Yeah. And then you see double lines, like right. him going over You're stuff. Right, build it up a little bit. <laughs> Lockheed received a <laughs> Look at that muscular body. Jim Lee, man. <laughs> Jim Lee ha does have two body types. Male and female? <laughs> muscular male, muscular female. Bringing out the shadows in Professor X. Cool colors, man, with mounts on the uh, Professor X wheelchair thing. He does a good job coloring these. Because whenever you see the black and white art versus the final art, He's bringing a lot to it. He is. Like, they, we saw that Rogue piece, and it was just her figure. Like, I can't wait to go to that card and see what, what mounts is bringing to the table. There's the, uh, the Magneto is a really good one, too, because you get a good shot of the black and white up front. And uh, it's almost different, the, the end result. I love this. Like, his domino, I thought, was really awesome. Hey, you realize this is the comedian promo art from the Watchmen promo piece. Before Watchmen comes out, there was a promo piece for each of the characters. Oh, right, yeah, and yeah. this is comedian's promo piece. That, that's true. You're right. I mean, there's Paul Mounts as, as your MVP on that card. There's yeah, a absolutely. lot of drawing in that background. Yeah, just the Storm figure. That's the only thing that's drawn by, by Jim Lee. And the hair is so dashed. Yeah, that it might, works well. That might be towards the end. Like You would you would think that if you were being methodical, you might start with the X-Men and like really pour over those. And then, you know, when you get to Widget, maybe you bash that one out. Yeah, I wonder even a couple of them, like that storm almost looks like it might have been drawn at a different size. You know, if it would have been like a first early go of it and, and try to work those details out. What is the background on that? Yeah, Paul Mounts, man, what's up? Dude, is that like early, dig some kind of digital background? It looks like, man, it was like that, um, and it looks like a paste up. You know, like uh, there, you would see this kind of, um, there's like a Billy Idol album cover and shit like that, that like has that kind of computer generated yeah. stuff. Kind of weird. Also, this hand, it feels like her power is some energy thing, and that's like the ball of energy around the hand that she's about to, has like, to boom, boom. Has, save that one for boom, boom. Has to save, uh, like, it's the Rob Liefeld hair. Yeah. You know, you have to draw it that way. Definitely. Always thought that Cyclops was really good. He really created the, the sort of what people think in their mind of Cyclops, like from our generation movie. Cause like that's a Cyclops from the cartoon. You know how they talk about Liefeld figures being like 15 heads tall or whatever. That is a very small head on Cyclops. His legs are spread out wide. If he were standing up straight, that's a 15 head tall guy. I love it. <laughs> Bringing in some other characters here, starting to get ambitious. This, this must be early in the process. He created Gambit. <laughs> So he's going into business for himself, man. Maybe, he's maybe. making his character look a little extra cool. <laughs> Heck of a cable. Yeah, good cable. Chains up front. Man, Archangel's a cool looking character. So I hard to draw. I'd draw. Right, I don't know that I'd want to draw him in a monthly book, but very cool looking. I loved him. Like, he was a character when I first started reading comics. I was like, yeah, that's, that's amazing. The way he drew that Banshee, man, I swear, like... Gave a compelling argument to grow a mullet. Mm. I don't know if I'll go that far, but it's a good banshee. <laughs> he did all those X-Men well, though. Because yeah. that was the Claremont, all the subplots. So you'd get like different characters in each issue, it seemed like. They would all look pretty good. See, when you get to Kylan, like, you don't put that much energy into that card? Yeah, I, I don't know Kylan. I saw your intro. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe an Excalibur character? Yeah, I, I, like, if you don't recognize them, man, they're from the Excalibur. I like that Jean Grey. He nice does a heck of a Colossus, it. man. Yeah. Colossus was one I would always scratch my head over, just how you... They, they always look metallic. Yeah. And I just could not figure that out. How do you draw metallic? The big characters all looked cool. I only had that one, one style of uh, woman's face, but... They all look good. Yeah, like there were like two or three eyes that he would do. Because there would be like the Psylocke eyes and then there would be the other kind. And and then when J. Scott Campbell comes out, then Jim Lee learns a new set of eyes. Gotta up the game. It looks good with the green, yellow, blue color palette for Polaris. Boom Boom and Richter, I guess. Yeah, Richter not getting any uh, any credit though. Good Jubilee card. I feel like uh, Jim Lee did a lot to make Jubilee his. I mean, he turned her to Carrie Kelly. Yeah, okay. You, you know, like she, like she she was running around in like Dazzler's costume and stuff when Sylvester was doing it. But then he gave her like the damn shades, the trench coat. Uh, they color her in basically Robin colors, like in Extinction Agenda and stuff. 
You know what, man? There's a uh, Paul Mound signature underneath Jim Lee on this one. Wonder if that's an indication of an early card trying that style out. Or a later card where it's like, hey, man, put put your name on there. Yeah, certainly when he's putting in work. But it's not on all of them. Strong guy, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great strong guy. Tough proportions to make work. Yes, sir. Bill Sienkiewicz character. Captain, Captain Britain's another one of those hard ones to draw because like the mask isn't isn't like a uh, latex mask. There's like it's like a helmet, so there's a thickness to it. And then uh, try to remember all the designs on that damn costume. Yeah, it's one of those I always see listed as like uh, you know good looking costumes, but yeah, not the easiest one to draw. And there's your forge, killer forge. Yeah, really good. Putting him in the classic suit with like the red headband. I like uh, Barry Windsor Smith, man, but. Jim Lee evolved it in a pleasing way. He did, and you get the cable leg, kind of the sexier version of cable. Yeah. Now, now, does Jim Lee draw it once? <laughs> You'd be able to tell by these things right here. We're talking about Jamie, the the uh, Madrox, the multiple man, and it does look like uh, it is one image. Yeah, I think you're. I think that you're gets right. statted over and over and over, which makes it, sense. It should be. Yeah, I like that card. I'm not complaining at all. Makes Quicksilver a badass. Dude, look at the signatures on that one. Mounts is above Jim Lee on that one. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's your rogue card. That's a nice background. Yeah. Some wet media. You sure about that? Looks like the airbrush. Oh, yeah, you might be right. You see the speckle. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I bet you that whole background is airbrush. <laughs> more of that digital effect do you think that widget is drawing 100 of 100 yes <laughs> <laughs> right now that's my uh, leader in the gate for the last drawing maybe that's the game we play <laughs> like so so, uh, <laughs> so uh widget is in the running man for... I'm, I'm hoping there's like three or four that look like that was the last day the last hour <laughs> I liked this bishop card as a kid. Really good, man. It's it's an interesting exercise because you have to communicate what the character is about in the card. If if you if you if you're ambitious with it, yeah. And Bishop was at the time so hot of a character, and he was in that mold of Cable badass. Also, that's my argument for making the mullet look good. Yeah, sure, sure. Shots to Larry Strong. Came big on the mullet and Maverick. This is another one, Jim Lee character going into business for yourself. Yeah, not a good character. <laughs> nice card. I think we've got another X four X caliber character here. Yeah, not somebody I recognize. I like the color thing again. I, I really, man, flipping through these, seeing them again, it really feels like Paul Mounts. Huge part of why these cards work so well. If they'd have had different colorists working on this set, I don't think it would be as successful. Right. You know, having that one vision it really keeps the cards together. You know, it feels like a set. Yeah. Good Mr. Sinister. Very putrid background. Love the Deadpool card. When when Rob Liefeld sees a, like a Jim Lee Deadpool or Cable, he has to be over the moon, right? I would think so. I think that's a good looking character. That whole card is great. The greens behind his red costume. Good background drawings. Yep. Yeah, it feels like Jim Lee did a little extra on the Deadpool there. Working Proteus. With his buddies. This is like shout outs to uh, G uh, John Byrne. You know, there would be some of those uh, X-Men covers during the Proteus era. This is another nice cover. I think this one's early in the run. A lot <laughs> of energy. The deadline's still far away. And it's good cartooning. Like, if yes. this was just his style, like, that would be sick. If that's just how he drew Wolverine, Agreed. that would be a cool-looking thing. That's the thing that hurts my feelings, is, like, I look at this stuff, and it's a little more minimal than his typical inking style. I like this style. Yeah, it's really good. I always argue for these artists to ink themselves... And this is where you really see Jim Lee inking himself, and I think it looks... It's some of my favorite Jim Lee. Great juggernaut. Yeah. I imagine that kind of thing is hard to draw, like, because he's such a big character. How do you communicate big right. on such a small surface level? All of it. Big and impact, movement. And Another example. Coming at you. Yeah. Another example, dude. Freaking Sentinels. Can't get much bigger than that in the X-Men universe. Those look good. Makes, uh, you know, like whenever there are background details like those buildings, that's what I think of as like, you're trying to do big. Yeah. What, what, how do you do that? Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one exception to your Excalibur rule. Right. Mask. This feels like one that 
thank, ha happy to draw something different. Ah, uh, I like that. Yeah, sure. Because it's good drawing, but man, that doesn't look like the other characters. Shiva, Wolverine character. Man, I thought at first it was Strife. strife. Ah, uh, I think we'll get a Strife. Yeah. I like that Apocalypse background. Full Moon Zine. <laughs> Sabretooth, another classic of this set. Yeah, this is my Sabretooth, too. Like, that older one from the Alan Davis era, that would have been, like, the the Sabretooth 1 toy. I like it less than the, than the head wrap, dude. I know I'm uh, in a minority, but alas. The head wrap's such a weird costume piece. It is. And it's so prolific in the 90s. Yeah, because of Jim Lee. Like, he's the dude that brings that shit to Vogue. It's fun seeing uh, Jim Lee do Art Adams characters. Yes. And he's actually going pretty minimal with him. This is uh, like the giant belly button shadow. Reminds me like fat dudes. You see him like if, if they're sweating through their shirt or something. Yeah. That belly button spot gets big. Yes. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good observation on Jim <laughs> Lee's part. I feel like the Caliban card was the most common. You would get a Caliban card in every pack. Super generic character to me. Yeah. Yeah, so just this makes me wince because when you're putting together your set, yeah, it's like fuck another Caliban, and you, everybody gets them, so it's untradeable. Another X Factor character, I'm sure. Ooh, dude, the brood looks kind of badass, man, and a lot of that does have to do with the Paul Mount's color, all these day glow pinks and yellows and blues. It looks good. It looks good, and again, I feel like if you're drawing 100 of these things and 90 of them look like superheroes, you get very excited for the ones that don't. Yeah. I'm disappointed in that blob. Yeah, you know, it looks like he was looking too much at, uh, like, the Rob Liefeld blob or something. I'm, I'm, I'm just complimenting him on his fat belly button on Mojo, and then we kind of dropped the ball with Blob. I love Blob was in a bunch of comics when I started reading sure. for some reason, and I really liked that character. He was gross. He, was, he looked different. He seemed menacing. There's your strife. I like the blob headshot. Dude, he looks like Chain Gang. Yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, yeah, Strife. That's not the card I remembered from Strife. I wonder if I think of a different uh, Marvel set. War Wolves. That's another Excalibur. You know it. <laughs> Omega Red, Jim Lee character. Man, those characters I f did not catch on well. No, they, they had their day in the sun, but very 90s, you know? He, he was in the Marvel Capcom game and shit. Black Tom Cassidy with an upside-down Jim Lee logo. What's up with that? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe it's like a last minute, like, oh yeah, I didn't sign this one. Yeah, it could be. It it's also could be uh, maybe there's like four drawings on one comic page, and he's just fucking... He probably doesn't know which way is up or down at a certain point, dude. Just totally going through the motions. How about this mystique note from Paul Mounts? Another one of those wrapping paper backgrounds I pasted in. Wrapping paper. There it is, dude. Who'd have thunk it? That's a great background on Sauron. Feels like old fantasy painted art. Arthur Sidem or something. Yeah, I created the background and added those cliffs, says Paul Mounts. Great art, a good artist, man. Like, what else do you got out there? Yeah, compliments th that, that image very well. S Saturnine. This feels like the most generic of the Jim Lee face. Yeah, that, I mean, that's quintessential Jim Lee. Toad. Once again, looking at Rob Liefeld. That Rob is a disgusting looking character. Yeah. Yeah, like, Rob took it to a place that nobody else did. Like, if you see what what uh, Kirby did, it was, like, kind of a fat kind of character. Yeah. Uh, but Rob Liefeld created this version of Toad. Very greasy looking. Yeah. And a lot of teeth. Shadow King looks like a fun card. Inventive. I don't think I've ever seen that Shadow King card before. Yeah. It looks like the Daemonites mm -hmm. from... Uh, it does. Wildcats. White Queen in the quintessential Jim Lee 90s pose with the T and the A, both on display. A lot of Art Adams in that drawing. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the T and the A. <laughs> Got to work them both in there. Oh, this is one of those cool storytelling cards, man. Uh, Mastermind, where you see the Jason Wingard uh, reflection from the Dark Phoenix saga. That's some thinking. 
That's a nice image too. Like that's another one that feels pretty gross. Oh, he's a gross character. Well, that's what I mean. Like nailing that. It's almost a wet look. You ever like, see? You ever see that cover? Like I did a uh, variant for yes. X Men Grand Design where he's talking about, "Can I lick your elbow?" That's what I think of. <laughs> but he got it both, man. He got it in the background too. It just uh, feels slimy. Yeah, just wet, drippy. Death bird. Love the death bird and the background color, all of that. That's a good card for me. Oh, it's one of those characters that's like quit, like total Jim Lee character, transcended the comics. You know, she's a villain in the video game. Great toy. All right, some insight here. So I bet you that stuff that I thought was maybe digital may be this wrapping paper stuff. This background is another wrapping paper I pasted on the board. It was based on photos of crystals that had been run through a prism. Wow. So bizarre. It's so 90s, man. Yes. Makes and, me rethink a bunch of stuff that I think I know what it is. Because if this is wrapping paper, I'm way off. And you think, like, you see these weird interlaced lines? Like, I bet that's not on the original. And, like, xerography of the date would have weird banding and stuff like that. Yeah, it could be artifact of that for sure. But it looks good in that context. Also, how cool is it that Paul Mounts is, like, thinking in those terms? Like, going to the swap meet and looking at different interesting wrapping papers? That's what guys did, you know, if it's their job, if it's their, uh, it's, you know, their obsession. It, it's sampling. It's like a DJ. Uh -huh. I feel like the gold team, blue team shit only went so far because, like, the same characters would be showing up. Everybody wants Wolverine. Right. You know, you can't have an X-Men comic without Wolverine. What you talking about? Had to be a challenge drawing five, six, eight, ten characters in that small of a space. Right. All ganged up together, and now, like, you don't want to repeat the poses. Right. You know? But how much can you do with them? Yeah. I suppose you could have drawn it bigger, but he, it doesn't look like he did. No, I don't think so. Yeah, like, that's a real weak X-Force. That looks like a quick one. Yeah. That might be card number 99 that was drawn. I was wondering, yeah. Shatterstar looks good there. Sure. Like his shading and stuff. <laughs> and he had, to, he had to, like, tone down that feral hair. Yeah, that's a pretty generic piece. Hellfire Club? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just headshots. Pretty straightforward. The MLF? That one at least has some variation. Like, Although we don't get to see, uh, I don't know if it's... Forearms? forearms. We don't get to see forearms of forearm. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he's totally doing the Rob Liefeld shit for the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and stuff. Makes sense. That's probably where I was seeing the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Like in X-Force comics? Yeah, I think. New Mutants. I think New Mutants, actually, before it went to X-Force. This is that post-Claremont, Trevor Fitzroy, Bishop bullshit. <laughs> Did they stick around? Did they have uh, <laughs> lasting power? That's a good question. Oh, geez. And I guess we have to get one X Factor, X Caliber. Uh, it's every time. Set. Every one of these characters that I don't recognize is that it, it hasn't failed. You know, like, we were, we were probably such marks that if they would have just left the E off of X Caliber, we probably would have read it more. I, I bought a couple of them just trying it out, and it didn't make sense. Like, it didn't seem like they were part of the X universe. Yeah. I love the Sunspot. I like that character a lot. I thought visually it was a cool character. Handled interestingly over the years. Like that Dark Phoenix one again for those, those backgrounds. The abstract backgrounds, like the energy stuff coming off. He's good at that. He is good at that. And that feels like an ambitious drawing. It's a big character. Long shot, another one of those Art Adams characters. And it's always fun to see like how he, what he does with that, given the influence. Right. Yeah, I feel like this is a character he reveres. I think it was a character he would talk about trying to bring back in his run. He, which he did, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was like the uh, stuff where ghosts were drawing it, so it's like less interesting to look at. Magic. Ileana Rasputin. See, now I'm getting an eye for it. It feels like some wrapping paper there on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. And then hit it, hit it with the white airbrush over top. Do some cool energy things with the airbrush up top there. Another Art Adams looking image with like that skinny, crazy skinny waist. Look at her headshot. That feels different. That feels like it's drawn different. It feels like Sienkiewicz inked it. Yeah. Like, something's up. Those tools or something I think are different in that one. Yeah, maybe. It, Dried up marker. Yeah, or just like like not even pencil. 
so it's like a little loose. It's even looser than the looseness of like this other stuff. Dude, look at Dazzler. She has a dead death blow eye. Yep. She never had that. Dazzler never looked that cool. Except maybe on the Ruler Skate Sienkiewicz cover. <laughs> this is, uh, she was one of my favorite characters because of the cartoon. And she was so underused in X-Men that I'm like, well, I'm a Dazzler mark. She was in the video game. You always pick Dazzler. Yeah. I think that's a good team shot. The Star Jammers there. We did it before, Miss, so we'll do it again. Play the hits. You know what this big green guy's called? Mm -mm. Chode. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Yeah. <laughs> the Imperial Guards. Can't help but think of uh, the late, great Dave Cockrum when, when those characters show up. You know, those team cards that are vertical have so much more power than the horizontal ones. You're right. Good metal on uh, Lilandra there, and outer space with no stars. I think he was. Uh, I think he would, might have been leaving that up to Paul Mounts, and Paul didn't didn't pick up a, the cue. Yeah, I like that card overall, though. It's a different different composition too with that background. I don't even know what the WHO is. World Health Organization. Oh, let's see. Is it Excal Excalibur Nine? <laughs> <laughs> Roma. You know who Roma is, right? No. She's the one that sends them through the Siege Perilous, and they end uh, up in Australia. Gotcha. I was thinking Powers and Glory, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty Paul? <laughs> <laughs> How about the flat green background for that one? That's Paul Mounts turning in his last card. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you might be right, man. Oh, here we go. The, the, the multi-set. Yeah, the, like, like nine, nine cards that fit together. And, and the cool thing is, at the end, they'll probably show that image... Oh, but look, see, he still has to draw some shit on the back of Yeah, I was going to say, those. like, that Nightcrawler background, that could have been a front of a card. Totally. When you have these images, you see it in those those comic book covers where there's nine covers that butt above and below mm -hmm. and to the side. When that final image is put together, it's always very underwhelming. Yes. you got to kayfabe that perspective in a real boring way. Yeah, it breaks uh, a lot of rules. Like if it were one composition, you know, you wouldn't have nine figures all the same size. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have the same level of importance. Yeah, I do. I, I hope that there's a comp, <laughs> that this thing's all on one page somewhere. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, my goodness. And we have holograms. Jeez. That's a bold move to do, like, let's scan the hologram and see what we get. Yeah, man. That's wild. I feel like that should be a note from the editor, like, in terms of producing this book and trying to get a good a good image of this. To do it or to not to do it. Just how hard it is to get an image of, like, a hologram oh, I know. card. I see what you mean, yeah. That gambit looks really cool. Yeah, I feel like you would probably have to go photo. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. Seems like a challenge. The Magneto... Not too bad. Yeah, that one looks sharp as hell, actually. Like, this is like a cool palette. Yeah, I was I was thinking that, like the effects of this stuff. I always think about printing things and then uh, scanning the printed result to get certain effects. You know, I was thinking, like, what would it look like? And I bet there would be a place for it to, ha to like, color something digitally, just, just in some basic kind of way. Grab the high-res, like, JPEG on your iPad and then scan your iPad. Yeah, with all, all the that. interlace and stuff and all the like this is what i would say beep this part out yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and there's your your full full image right there and see it just it does it, breaking the rules is a good way to put it because they're all on the same plane like basically if this was a three-dimensional space they would all be bumping into each other right yeah it'd be very flat the archangel i think works very well at the top uh, but then you'd have to figure out some creative stuff elsewhere. Yeah. But you that's know, not an, the point. An extreme close-up somewhere maybe in the bottom chase. where you're getting like a face as like your ninth size. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like just chasing the opportunity to put that together was part of the fun. Sure. There's acknowledgments and stuff back here. I'm guessing that the acknowledgments are uh, the editor. Must but be. But, well, if it wasn't for editor Eric Cloffer's vision... So I have no idea who the acknowledgement is, because it's not Jim Lee. Because lastly, my thanks yeah. go to Jim Lee for breathing life into this. So that's the one thing. Who's acknowledging what? I don't know. Sven, maybe? 
See, Sven from Marvel? Put this together? Because it says former Marvel colleagues. It's strange. Who could that be? Paul Mounts? Tom Brevoort, maybe? He's in there, though. His former Marvel colleagues, Tom Brevoort. <laughs> He's the first guy listed. Who the fuck is acknowledging these the people? I don't know. Charlie Kochman? Yeah, I don't know. Sven <laughs> is listed down there further further along, too, so I'm so it's, sure. So his fanboy stuff, you know. Yeah, this is great. Be, being on that French flap, or uh, that's not a French flap, being on that inside dust jacket with uh, with Uncle Jim, that's a fun thing. And uh, I guess every copy comes ganged up with like a little set of cards. So let's see what the heck those are. I haven't opened these up this yet. Could be, this could be the good move for uh, for Uncle Jim to come on the show. Something to talk about with you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I see we got the X-Men uh, one comic cover. And the Danger Room uh, super image. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, neat book. I like that, they, uh, that they're that they working from the actual cards, like reproducing the cards is a good is a good touch. That's one of those things, right, where, where that's the challenge. Like, how do you present this material? I say let's put another book into production and just have that original art printed yeah, as big as possible. Yeah, I love that original art. I, I bet you could chase that down. Everybody who owns a piece of that probably showing that off on comicartfans.com. Jimmy, you good to go? Yeah. Okay, favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, man? Hulk Grand Design, Monster, and Madness are in comic shops everywhere. It's me retelling the 60-year history of the Hulk is one continuous story, writing, drawing, coloring, the Grand Design way. Also, join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see more of my comics art and how I make comics and download some of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one through four, are on the stands as we speak. Uh, the trade paperback forthcoming in September. Go pre-order that thing, man. Uh, the Anti-Social Network trade paperback for Red Room is on the stands. Thank you guys for keeping those Amazon numbers super, super strong. Uh, the comic is banned in more than 28 countries. It's banned in more than 10 comic shops. So if you don't have easy access to the comic uh, locally... Get that stuff from my link tree in the description below this video. I do take you to links to the Fantagraphics site to scoop that stuff up. Uh, my Patreon is there also where you could read these comics uh, right now today. Three bucks gets you the archive. Uh, we are we are putting together a new project. We're calling uh, Cartoonist Cafe Comic Book Christmas in July, the very last Saturday in July. We are taking a bunch of our comp copies that we've been sent uh, from our various publishers. We are uh, taking uh, our... Uh, stacks of our doubles of comic books uh, to the local free lending libraries that are in the neighborhood and around town. Uh, we're stuffing those things with comic books in hopes of creating a uh, a new readership of, uh, of, of comics out there. Man, we need to do what we can to bump up those numbers and get more people interested in comics. Uh, I do think that there might be some uh, comic swap trading happening uh, uh, <laughs> independently <laughs> in uh, in these freestanding libraries and that's not a bad thing to give no. those things some traffic. Uh, what else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Given those marching orders, Jim will be on the way. Make more comics.